only do this incredible kid Cause I, I am seed of a chosen creed You don't see me like me Cause I, I am And the reason you do what you do When you wanna be me instead of you Cause I, I am Still on beat Showing love to the streets Come on, you know me Cause that's who I am And good morning, everybody. Saturday morning sports talk. Kevin Hastings here, Mitchum's Kitchen Breakfast. I just finished mine up along with Terry Reinhardt, Ken Link, and John Prather's in the house on the board tonight uh, or today, this morning. It, it, I don't feel like last night ever ended for me, uh, and I'm guessing it hasn't for Ken yet either. Uh, and uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about that in a moment. Hunter's out this morning. He's getting rested up t today, Terry, for today's big broadcast. Uh, he he couldn't he couldn't make it up here this morning, but but I made it. <laughs> Them young guys, they just can't go. You know, Ken stayed up past midnight <laughs> last night, and then came in this morning. <laughs> Let me turn Terry up a little bit. Yeah. I mean, and then you never know if they're coming. <laughs> yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. New generation is different. I love the kids. Uh, a lot of them, you know, are, well, as Hunter, he is 20, what is he, 23? Yeah, Kevin? something like that. You know, that's what I'm saying. But uh, <laughs> it's it's like, this is my time. I only live once, and we're going to do it my way. <laughs> yeah, and it's different when we were growing up because now time to them is more important a lot of times than work and money. It is. They, well, the free time is what's really important to them, to do I what have, they want to do. <laughs> I have been around kids who tell me, and people who are young adults like Hunter is, who says, well, you know what, I've got days to spend. If the Daytona 500 was today, then I would lay out because I'm oh, going to yeah. watch that oh, because yeah. it's another whole year before that comes back around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a different mentality nowadays. I, I, I watched a... I went to, when we went to the All-Star race, I don't know if I, I, I said it on there or not, but I, I watched a, a grandfather, might even be a great-grandfather, because uh, the kid was pretty young and he was uh, pretty gray-haired, old, old, old elderly fella, but he, he got a, that we sat, we, we were given the tickets, so we were right there at the start-finish line, fifth row, he sat in front of us. So he had pretty good seats, right? The grandson probably, I would say, my son's Seven. He's a little bit bigger than him. Maybe eight, maybe nine. Uh, from so we sat right in front of the entrance music and all that, the, the stage and everything. So the, the the jukeboxes are bumping in her face and and all. The, and the DJ hadn't played a country song yet. She's playing all rap and everything <laughs> else. I don't know if she knew what her audience was, but uh, anyway, um, they. Uh, it, so from the start, from the time we got there, Terry, until about ten laps left in the race. That kid watched or, or played video games on his phone mm -hmm. the whole time. <laughs> and when I say not once did he look up, not once. Papa all bought them both NASCAR NASCAR hats, and they're sitting there watching the race, and, and, and he's up, and he stands up when everybody else stands up. He knows everything that's going on, and, and, and you know he's, he's been to a bunch of these before. And I, pro I sat right behind the kid. I didn't have to stand up once because he was in my way. Not not once. I just sit there and we watched him play video games. We had a great view, man. And, and, yeah, I had a good view. And what was what was funny though? <laughs> I, I will say what was funny. The kid did something funny one time. That it got real quiet. You know, like it was a wreck or or something mm -hmm. happened. You know, and the caution went by and the, and the blowers were on the other side of the track. Well, you know, I said he was playing a racing game, right? How about when it got real quiet once one second? He won. Whatever race he was doing, and he, and he screamed <laughs> uh, out, "Yeah!" And everybody looked around. Everybody saw him like it was quiet. Like, yeah. and everybody heard this kid <laughs> scream, "Yeah!" And I'm, I just put my hand over my face, like, "Oh my goodness!" He's he's excited about it. He just won this video, this phone race on his phone. Like, at what point do you take that phone away, Ken, at the racetrack after you bought the tickets? Uh, I I do it uh, pretty early. <laughs> oh, how old was the young kid? About I mean, nine, probably. Okay, well, yeah. You know, you my know, son's in second, going to second grade. He was older than him, but not that much older. Like he was young, but he wasn't. Uh, he wasn't twelve or anything like that. Yeah, I always take young kids, especially and 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 we all know if you go t-ball wise and they move up to coach pitch, their attention span is very little. I mean, you know, if you can keep oh, them occupied for fifteen minutes, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you Even know, the you pitchers well. never kick kick dirt. No yeah. Pain. yeah, it's hard to keep saying. keep them focused. It, it really is. is. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, Terry, uh, last night we uh, 
had our last game of the year. Uh-oh. And uh, great excitement, Tom. Oh goodness. The the <laughs> and, and Ken, I don't know if I've told you before, but the coach gives the most inspirational speeches to seven year olds you've ever heard. Oh you? my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they take it all in. <laughs> the the first speech this year involved a speech about how Nick Marcakis loves the game so much he took less money to play for the Braves. That, that's the first speech. It only got different and better from there. So I just want to tell you, we started there. Yeah. <laughs> Last night, the kids got the uh, the inspirational "Be All You Can Be" speech, and it went on and on and on forever. And, and uh, but it was that that was funny. But we uh, I, what I want to get to is so last night going into the game, so it's his first year hitting coach pitching. And last year's T ball, he's shortstop and pitcher and playing good and hitting the ball. And the seven year olds have a terrible time adjusting to the coach pitch. Uh, the distance wise, I think is a problem. Maybe they can mm-hmm. shoot, scoot in a little bit. Uh, just from practicing in the backyard, you know, I can get in different angles, and he just smokes the ball. You know, get shorter, or or even throw sidearm or underhanded. And and, and but but for most time, the coach pitchers are all throwing overhanded. They're all six foot tall. These pitcher, the ki- the kids are what three to five mm-hmm. feet to but three or four feet. So the pitch is a rainbow. And if you have a – so lefties have a what? Natural – they got this natural low loop and swing. So he's swinging this. The ball's coming this. So it's like an X. So they have to meet at a certain point. So he's had trouble getting the ball in play. He's made, he fouled off a bunch and, and getting it in play. So he's had a rough time this year. So yesterday I was working in the backyard before the game on, uh, uh, and, and hitting some balls. And I noticed that, you know, he's been behind all year. And th- what we had done, we had adjusted earlier because of the pitch being like – you know, coming Looping. at a, coming yeah. at that uh, the soft, but kind of like a softball, really, yeah. at that angle that we had. And, and actually, for kids, it's harder harder than a, just a straight right. pitch because, you, like you say, it's got to get the angle just right. So when I, you uh, have that in this is area, I know Cherville does a lot of uh, machine pitch. Yeah, they and that ball's the it. same. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But when you having coaches, you got coaches who throw hard. You got coaches who throw soft. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, all different. Some of them loop it mm-hmm. in there so the kids hit it. And I have noticed that even when you go to all stars, for some kids to adjust to a new pitcher that's out there on the mound, oh yeah, it's a big difference. Oh yeah, because well, and but I like the pitchers better than I do the machines because of that. Because but my biggest thing, like if they would allow them to get closer, I think that would make a yeah. difference big time because. I think everyone's trying to be on a regulation. Let's all be the, exactly the same, but that's not the same for the, the the eight-year-old kid. Don't need like they've got this circle in front of the mound. It goes like two feet in front of the mound. And it goes way behind the mound. Like if they would switch the sides of the circle to the big part in the front, no, no, I've never seen one pitcher go to the back of that mound or want anybody go to the back of that circle. There's nobody ever that stood there. But so last night we made an adjustment. He had he had we had lowered his bat and get it on and put it on his shoulder to try to hit that higher pitch. So we were because his swing was down. So we're trying to get him to go up at it. So I noticed, but what he was having trouble with because you know the bat's a little bit heavier and, and, and bigger than him. The first thing he did, Terry, was he was dropping the barrel of the bat. So that's why he was late on everything. And I didn't notice it until last night when we were working at a shorter angle where I was. We were throwing some soft tosses and his bat kept just barely dropping. And so last night I had him hold it up and get it off his shoulder. Just all he did was move it uh, two inches off his shoulder. He got two hits on opposite way over right, right at shortstop and third base. Hadn't hadn't hit really hit the ball all year. And, and, and made one slight adjustment in the back. And it, this, you know, you're talking about the kids. Same thing with the major leagues. You, you got to make adjustments. Mm-hmm. Pitchers figure you out. They figure out your weaknesses, your weaknesses. And if you don't make adjustment, guess what? You don't do well. The worst part about it, it's his last game. Yeah. Can you remember yeah, this man. to next yeah. year? Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> you, had you, you, had one. you had to remember <laughs> what you did. But he come in, Terry. What was, what's also funny, so you know they get five pitches or whatever. So every – there's seven. You're talking about how they don't listen or pay attention. Every time he's went up to bat the last probably three to four games, don't swing at the first pitch. So. Okay. He swings, swings at the first pitch. <laughs> <laughs> last night, he stood there like a dang statue on the first two pitches on the first pitch of both the bats last night. And he came in the second time. So I listened exactly what he was so proud that he listened. And it worked. <laughs> and, and it worked it for him. Yeah. And it worked for so, him. So now I can tell him to do whatever, hopefully, and he listens. <laughs> <laughs> we got a young girl, and, and I'm not going to mention names or nothing like that. It plays over at West Lincoln, but – she plays uh, Sweeties, which is T-ball for girls. Mm-hmm. And uh, then she plays Coach Pitch Girl. She plays in both of them. But she is in the Sweeties age bracket. Yeah. But uh, 
she gets in sweeties and bam, she hits it to the outfield. I'm talking constantly mm -hmm. because she's learned how to adjust from mm -hmm. a pitch being thrown. So she's learned how to adjust her bat, and she just rocks it right. in sweeties. But when she's playing coach pitch, and, and I'm amazed at her because she can play either one, mm -hmm. you know, and she's going to be an all-star. I don't know which one they're going to put her in, whether they'll go with uh, coach pitch girls for her to play because she's a great fielder. She can play the game. I mean, I'm like, my God, she's going to be a star if she plays down, you know, but mm -hmm. I don't know which one they put her in for her to play, but I'm proud of her mm -hmm. because she plays both of them, and she can play both of them consistently and be like a young kid playing coach pitch girls and plays it like she's been playing it forever. Well, it, it, it's good seeing that, like, there's a lot of kids that, that do that, and, and then, and, and I'm glad you kind of kind of got to that point about, and, and then I right, talk about skill-wise and, and players, you know, a lot of players were like, well, I, you know, they play the fall ball and, mm -hmm. and this and 19 different balls. And they only play baseball. We talk about changing uh, sports and doing different things throughout the year all the time. And it, it don't matter. I, I want to make the point of this as far as terrible. Let's say post-100 post goes. The two best players, let's say, in my opinion, you maybe agree, Roberts and Mason, uh, the, on the on the, on the the both with national, national players. I would agree. Years. So they both, I drive, either way I come to work, I have to drive by one of them's house. Neither one of them played any fall ball. Both of them played different sports. And neither one of them grew up in a big, wealthy home. I drive by both of the houses. I drove by Mason's house this morning thinking about Major League Baseball pitcher came out of that little house right there. Yeah. Same, thing yeah. with, same thing with Ralph. And so, and, and kind of like what the coach was saying last night, he was telling the kids, you can be what you want to be if you put your mind to it and, and, go, and go. I think they got to talk about the Kings Mountain kid. Uh, that, that that's doing well. Wilson, yeah, yeah. That, uh, yeah. state. Yeah. state yeah. That, that's who he was Defensive talking. Player that's who he was talking about. Terry, kind of with the kids a little bit last night, and uh, so uh, just kind of a reminder that you know you can do other things, play other sports, and be other things. You know, and it doesn't matter where you come from. Or and like you know, I got upset about that coach earlier this year, telling my nephew his bat costs less than than this other bat, and that was the most craziest thing I've ever heard. Like in actuality, coach. If you if you all had wood bats out here, you'd probably be doing better for all of them because they'd be hitting on a smaller sweet spot. But let's not go there. I mean, those bats are cheaper and, and whatever. But you it, know, we can do a lot of things with that. And I'm with you because I don't <coughs> care what type of basketball player you are. Hey, does everybody want Jordans? Everybody does, you know. But if you do not, whether it's Cougar. Uh, British Knights or whatever kind of tennis shoe you got. <laughs> I mean, I'm just telling you, if you can play the game, you can play the game, and no matter what shoe you're in. You remember the Akeem Olajuwon, yeah. oh, the yeah. Spaltings? That's what I'm uh, saying. He, he had the Spaltings uh, back. And then. one shoe. Dr. J, I mean, Dr. J yeah. didn't need Air Maxes, and Dr. Hey, Dr. J didn't have Jordans, did he? I'm old enough to remember back when they only had a couple of companies that made tennis shoes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah. know, there wasn't that many. I like the canvas Converse. <laughs> I mean, that was me. Converse has been, yeah, been there forever. It. Yeah. That's funny. Well, Terry, that 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 coach that uh, that 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 got fiery with me over, over the bats thing with my nephew. Believe it or not, he was throwing out two or three games this year. Well, there you <laughs> go. Yeah, well, I'll have to suspended. change you something there. It's suspended for we a might game. Not have been with me, I, I wasn't. Me the, I wasn't the first one or, or the last one that had a problem with him. Apparently. <laughs> Oh, what a mess on, on that was. But, uh, but, you know, another thing, too, as you mentioned, is don't forget, coming up, we got districts all around. Yep. That's coming up for all your Optimus programs. I mean, these are future stars. You might see them now and say, you know what, I watched that kid when they were in T-ball. You know, but uh, don't forget those things are coming up around our area. A lot of different things. I know Boger City has mm -hmm. the girls district this year out there. It's every age group out there at one location. Now, baseball, they scatter it at different places. So, you know, if you ever get a chance on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, just check your papers, figure out where your tournaments are at, and go watch them, you know. Um, another thing about the, you know, you talk about watching the future stars, you don't know which one it will be. Like, talking about Ralph in, in Little League, he hit, I played on his team, so I remember vividly, he only hit two home runs when he was 12. Two. The whole year. He hit Thir what thirty something in his yeah. senior year in, in Legion Ball and and so it it's it, it, it work you on can't tell and Terry I know you've seen it a lot with, with you may have one part kid that's pretty big for his age and he may dominate at the lower ages but once you get up to high school and it sort of evens out maybe he's not as dominant as he was well, well, we, we, had, we had with one guy in the league <laughs> the other guy on another team in the league yeah. team he hit I think fifteen in one year and then yeah. he did hit t he did hit ten in Legion. 
We did hit 30. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I go back to when I had these two girls and we were playing basketball. And these two girls was as eager. One on two. Uh, we were playing two girls. <laughs> <laughs> they beat me, too. <laughs> 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 hey, girl, I cannot believe I lost. But anyway. <laughs> but uh, they were eagle. And one was on my team and one was on another. And sometimes I sit back and uh, maybe get on myself a little bit because the one that I had, she was as good as the other one. And I'm talking about it lasted through about the sixth grade of Eagle. I mean, if you had those two going, you see people packed the place just to watch these two play against each other. But then the one on the other team got a little bit better. They started playing AAU. Mm -hmm. They started doing everything going around. And she got tremendously better than the other one. Yeah. You know, and when it came to high school, this one kid lit it up, you know, and I was able to coach her at that level. And uh, I will never, ever take anything with it. But you talking about being equal at one area, one, area, one excels. Right. Sales, yeah. you know. All right, it's time for the trivia question of the day before our first break. It's not a baseball-related question. It's basketball, NBA Finals-related question. When we come back, we're going to talk high school baseball. And uh, we, we're going to cut the short show short today, guys, at 930. Um, I've got to get on the road and get up to Greensboro. Uh, and uh, we're going to talk about that in just a, in just a few minutes. What, J.P.? You got a movie to get JP to? Saying, you got you know to get to? No, actually, there's a Comic Con going on in Gastonia. A little okay, library so. Comic Con I'll be going to. A uh, what? Comic Con. You know what that means, Terry? Comic Con. Well, you I, know what Con yeah. means? If I we'll were ever, we'll start from there, then we'll back up. You know what Comic Con means? Uh, number one, I would <laughs> never have to be able to walk in <laughs> JP's shoes. Cause I'd be scared where them shoes take me. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just being honest. Yeah. <laughs> If you're if you're watching online today, folks, if you listen, you can always watch online on YouTube. Uh, you can see me, Ken, and Terry. Here. I forgot to put Mr. Banana Van in, in Cinefani's seat for the day, uh, but we'll get to him in a minute. Maybe Muggsy Bugs will want to join the show, uh, like like he does sometimes. Uh, so the trivia question is basketball related, Terry. Since Michael Jordan retired, following, I'm with you. In every single NBA Finals, there's been four players. Have have been in every single NBA final since Jordan retired. If you can name three of the four, I'll give you four Crawdads tickets. 704-435-2844. Four players have been in every finals since Jordan retired. You can't you hadn't had a finals without one of these four players. I need three of the four. And then I'll give you four Hickory Crawdads tickets. 704-435-2844. Do you got a question, Terry? Does this mean like Coaching or playing? Players. Player Four home. players that, that have been in every final since Jordan retired. So if you went in every finals since the year after Jordan retired until this year, they've they've been in every finals. All right? Got it, Terry? You got your, you got your guesses? All right. 704 435 2844. We'll be taking calls on that. Uh, I'm going to write that down so JP can uh, have the answers because he has no idea probably what any of these mean. Uh, so I'm going to get that in. JP, bring me a notepad in here. And we'll get that right after the break uh, on ktcbroadcasting.com. 